Hey, how's everybody doing? Welcome back to the Hot Rod Workshop. Today, we're gonna make ourselves some gauge panels. Now, I'm sure you're all familiar with these. You always see these in magazines sold as a three gauge panel. Uh, doesn't matter the manufacturer, they always end up in a scenario like this. While these panels certainly work, we're gonna change it up a little bit, make ourselves a handmade panel for a three gauge and a four. The gauges we're gonna be utilizing are two and a sixteenth in diameter. We have a hole punch to handle that. The three gauge panel is gonna be eight inches long on the top, seven and a half inches on the bottom. You can see the slight taper. The four gauge is gonna be slightly wider at 11 inches at the top and 10 and a half on the bottom. So since we're dealing with symmetrical panels, it's good to take the time and figure out exactly how you're gonna lay out your gauges. Now the math can get a little crazy here, so just bear with me. Uh, this panel has a total of four gauges and each gauge is two and a sixteenth in diameter. A total of four gauges equals eight and a quarter inch. Now the center line that we have here equals a total of 10 and a half inches. I stopped it a little bit short. So we take the total amount of space taken by the four gauges and subtract it by the 10 and a half, that leaves us with two and one quarter of an inch spacing. So we take that amount of space, divide it by how many spaces we have in between the gauges. And we get a total of 0.450 or 450 thousandths of an inch. That is just, I think it's just shy of 7 sixteenths. So we're gonna roll with 7 sixteenths and that should get us close enough. It'll still end up being symmetrical in the end game. So since we have a symmetrical pattern here, we can start off in the center of left to right. And we want to, in order to find the first gauge to the left or right, we want to add half of the space in between these two gauges plus half the overall diameter or the radius of the first gauge here. So half of 7 sixteenths is 7 thirty seconds of an inch. Half of two and a sixteenth is one and a thirty second. That gives us a nice even inch and a quarter. So if you see over here in the corner, here's our center line. We go over an inch and a quarter. That gives us a center line for the first gauge, whether it's left or right, whichever way you want to start. Now from that spot, in order to get to the next gauge, we want to add a full space and also a full gauge size because we're utilizing half of this gauge and half of this gauge in order to get to the next one. So that gives us 7 sixteenths, the full space, and 2 and a sixteenth of an inch, a total of 2 and a half inches. So from the first center of the first gauge, you go over 2 and a half, and that gives us the second gauge to the left or to the right, whichever way you want to start. And you can just, whatever you end up doing on one side, you just mirror over to the other and you end up nice and square. From here, you can utilize a compass and just draw some simple circles from those center lines and just get yourself a nice visual just so you're verifying that you are in fact square with the panel. All right, so we're all set up with our chipboard templates. Now it's time to transfer it over to sheet metal. Okay, now that we have our transfer done, we have those two marks, two on the top, two on the bottom for our bead roller to follow. So we can connect those lines with a fine tip red Sharpie. I also want to 
connect the ends of the flanges so I can follow that with the tipping die on the bead roller as well. On the transfer, I also have a small hole that I produced with the um, center punch. So I have a center point for that bottom flange as well. All right, so we use the spring-loaded punch to place our holes for the four gauges. I want a more pronounced center punch in those spots, so I'm gonna hit it with a center punch and a hammer to get a better center punch. And I'm gonna utilize my compass to scribe a line where the gauge is gonna end up. Uh, this is a good practice for two reasons. One, you get to see where the gauge is gonna end up and it'll show you right away if it's close to a line. Also, when you go down the road of setting up for your punch to punch a hole for the gauge, now you have a large hole for your draw bolt to draw in your die and your punch. And you can center up your punch if, if, if the hole end up kind of, you know, drifting because the eighth inch bit walked on you or whatever the scenario is, you can always stop what you're doing, take the punch out, widen the hole up a little bit with a step bit, put the punch back in and now you can kind of dance around with the die and the punch to get yourself back on center as opposed to popping the hole and realizing that you're off center and now your whole panel's trash. Now, one of these days I'm going to get die chem in a aerosol can, but in case you don't have any die chem and you want a little bit more pronounced line with your scribe, you can always just kind of put a general idea of where the gauge is going to be with some magic marker. That'll give you a more easily readable line. All right, I'm pretty happy with the placement of the gauges. Now it's time to cut them out and form them.
All right, so here's where the scribe lines come into play to help you make sure that you're doing your punch exactly where you want it. Run your punch on the inside. Just spread the die on. And just kind of loosely tighten it up. Just till it starts to touch, back it off a little bit. And you can get a good idea, kind of play with the light and try to find where the scribe line. These two are okay, these two are a little bit low. So we're gonna widen these holes up first before we run the punch in, square it up nice and make sure all four are parallel. All right, so after some filing and polishing, ended up with two pretty decent four gauge panels. And I was able to put together two three gauge panels when the boss wasn't looking. All right, so thanks to the chipboard templates, I was able to make these pretty quick. Also, I'm able to put these away. And if I wanna make a couple panels later, I can reference them later on and whip them up pretty quick. Now you can utilize the chipboard to kind of prototype if you want to fold these up and make sure that they'll work for the scenario that you're in, or you can prototype by just whipping up something straight to sheet metal, record all your dimensions, and then make a chipboard template later. The uh, first panel that I made was a four gauge panel uh, for my buddy John's DeSoto. I was able to paint it a color close to his dash color and it turned out pretty well. So yeah, if you're looking to make something in a production scenario, chipboard templates are the way to go. Uh, also, I want to take this opportunity to thank all the viewers. I uh, just passed 500 subscribers, I think, two weeks ago. Uh, that's crazy. <laughs> I was talking about 100 subscribers, I don't know, two months ago, and I thought that was nuts. 500 is over the top. So thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it.